Ahoy! Captain Benzie here coming at you with another Acting on Instinct. Today's video is a little different to usual. Rather than analysing how the game works, we're going to look at the three maps used in the up-and-coming Rivals Champions this weekend. These maps are exclusive to the Champions mode currently, and this video is designed to give you an idea of what to expect so that you can plan your deck and matches accordingly. I'd like to give some special thanks to Jade Zion for sitting down with me and hammering out some of these thoughts. The first of these maps is Hold the Line. With all three pads covering the centre of the map, it will be obvious if an enemy tries to rush you as the pads will light up. Scouting, therefore, may not be as necessary here as it is on other maps. Holding these pads early is going to be very important, however, especially the bottom pad. Holding the bottom pad allows you to better protect your own harvesters, whilst allowing you the chance to pressurise your opponent's harvesters. If you're holding this pad, the Tiberium fields are pretty safe, so a deck that relies on two harvesters may be doable as long as you can block the approaches. Now these two rocks either side of the top will make supporting these pads at the top more difficult, as units will have to move around these to engage. Redirecting from one pad to another, therefore, also becomes more difficult. In regards to commanders, Kane is going to be a great option, as there are no shortage of spots to place his obelisk, and you'll be able to cover two pads with it. Jade suffers a little with the Tiberium fields being so far away, but Chem Cloud Explosions can clear the entirety of the top two pads in one Catalyst missile launch. As Strong Arm can drop her turret on the other side of these pads, she's also not a bad option, but the pads being so close at the top gives Solomon the opportunity to nuke almost all of them. Expect the top two pads to trade hands throughout the fight, with a lot of intense conflicts for contesting the bottom pad. Now Blind Spot is a much more brutal map. The rocks in the middle create two natural choke points at the top and the bottom. This will make redeploying units a much more arduous affair, meaning you pretty much need to commit a unit to the top or bottom as soon as you send it out. If your harvester is in the top fields, you'll be able to defend it nicely whilst holding your own pad, but as the battle rages and the harvesters move to the much more open bottom fields, they become much more difficult to defend. This means more expensive builds are going to be riskier in the late game when those first fields are used up. As a warning though, whilst the bottom pad is going to be important, it'll be vital to hold your own top pad. Once you lose this pad, it'll be tough to claw it back. Your opponent will have access to your Tiberium fields, vision on your base, and a new route around to the bottom pad. Again, Kane will be great at defending the top lane. Seth's drill pods also become very useful for pressurising your opponent's top pad. For GDI, Solomon will be very useful to clear out your opponent's top pad and to move forward quickly if given the chance. Now finally, let's look at Tug of War. To me, this map is the stuff of nightmares. Of the three maps, this is the only one where early rushes may be viable, as there is a clear line direct from your base to your opponent's fields. These lines do pass through choke points, so defending these pushes all the combat right into the centre pad. With the pads being so closely chained together, it really does become a tug of war in the centre pad I anticipate changing hands repeatedly throughout the match. As such, it will be vital to hold something on the back pad at all times. Long range units like snipers and basilisks will be great choices for this, and this map becomes terrifying with juggernauts or artillery on these back pads. Air units will be able to pressurise the back pads, however, unless you've got a good gauntlet of anti-aircraft firepower to stop them getting there. Now on this map, I genuinely think that all the commanders work well. Sure, Kane can cover a lot of the battlefield and multiple pads with his obelisk. Chem Cloud Explosions as Jade could quickly swing an entire match here, theoretically clearing all three pads in one go. Seth can launch up behind enemy lines to attack those rear pads. For GDI, Strongarm can block the choke points and really punish enemy infantry or aircraft with her turrets. Solomon again has the capability of clearing multiple pads in one ion cannon strike, and Lang will be great at protecting long-range units or holding a pad on its own with the drone in an emergency. Of course, 
Oxana and Jackson both can be used to give you a vital boost when you need to make a push forward, but this goes for all of the maps. Looking at these maps as a whole, air certainly has its place. Heavy tech builds may suffer, especially on blind spot, and rush builds will have a hard time on everything except tug of war. Now these maps are available for friendly matches during the Champions event, so I would strongly recommend jumping in some friendlies with one of your alliance mates just to get yourself acquainted with them and try out some of your builds. I'd personally expect to face people who are running one or two tech units as a second harvester is quite viable on several of these maps. I definitely plan for some aircraft to be flying around too. So good luck in Champions, let me know how you all get on after the event. Happy sailing, and see you on the battlefield.